Hi, I'm Adrian Engel with uh, Jack and Bucks. I'm Jordan Jacobson, the Regional Director of Social for iProspect. Let's see, we have a clicker. And I am not too short, so I will not be in the shadow. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the campaign that we put together, I will say for the Super Bowl, but it was actually a Twitter campaign for last February to launch a new product called the Food Truck Series. Uh, we'll talk uh, both about the insights that led to the campaign as well as the results from a social media perspective, working with iProspect to bring it to life. Uh, to give you a little bit of background on the brand first, you probably know us for our tacos and our advertising, and we've always been the brand that goes against the grain, so we challenge conventions when other brands maybe don't have the bowls to do it, um, if you've seen our recent spot. We were the first brand in the space to put a two-way speaker box in the drive-thru of a fast food restaurant. We were the first brand to launch a breakfast product in fast food, that's our breakfast jack, it's still one of our best-selling products today. We have invented entirely new day parts, like late night and brunch fest, and we continue to own that space. I joke that delivery is uh, you know, a new concept for a lot of brands in our space. We've been feeding drunk people and stone people for decades. We just do it safely now. So we have extended that innovative spirit into our advertising. Uh, Jack is the mascot, the icon of the brand, and he's been in existence since the mid-90s, and we always work to continue to make him relevant. And we have used him to uh, initiate a lot of firsts in the category and for the brand. So we actually hold a Guinness Book of World Records record for the world's largest coupon. That coupon was actually taken off the building and redeemed through a drive through believe it or not. We were the first to partner with the eSports space at the level of investment that we did. We sponsored Team Envy and three of their teams within that franchise. We partnered with Snoop last year to launch a munchy meal to celebrate the, um, again, the audience that knows us and loves us so well, um, but also to celebrate the legalization of marijuana in California. Snoop curated a munchie meal for us, for the late night audience. There's a lot of chicken in it. Um, and then our most recent campaign was about the teriyaki bowls. We kind of pushed the envelope there. Uh, a lot of press coverage on that one. Uh, in the end, very positive sentiment, and we definitely heard from our, our fans on social that came out in droves to support the brand and defend any of those naysayers uh, in the press. And in February, like I said, we partnered with Martha Stewart to launch this new campaign to uh, celebrate the food truck series of products, three sandwiches that we were launching for the first time. And it was an opportunity for us to pit Jack, who we think is a pretty big celebrity, uh, against someone like Martha Stewart to bring to life the campaign in a way that was very different in the QSR space. And in doing so, um, last year we made a big change. We want to make sure that we have the right partners at the table, and we hired Kara of the Dan Network and iProspect, uh, who started working for us about a year ago, and this campaign was their first initiative working holistically on a launch for us. Yeah, as Adrian said, this was the very first campaign that we planned on behalf of Jack in a Box after we awarded the business about almost to the day a year ago as yeah. we stand up here. You need so a drink. It's particularly sweet that we're standing on the stage talking about our successes. But you know, while we have a 60 second uh, Super Bowl spot, we have a huge celebrity partnership, really the big idea around the campaign was really taking a data first approach and using the tools that we have available to us to really be very prescriptive about the campaign to make the dollars work better for us and actually stretch the duration of the limited time limited time offer that we are supporting. So as part of the Dentsu Aegis Network, uh, our sister agency, Kara, and us have access to a product we call M1 that is essentially a database with 230 million US consumers in it that we layer every third party data source you could possibly imagine, plus uh, survey-based data to really dig deep into our target audience. And for Jack in a Box in particular, um, while it might sound easy to reach stoners and drunk people, it's actually not. Um, we have a target of about 28 to 30 million people in the US. We were actually able to identify 28.8 million of those within our database and really dissect this audience and really learn a lot about them. And the one thing that stuck out was while it's almost impossible to over-index on social media consumption these days, this consumer actually did. And not just across Facebook or Instagram. These are consumers that visit every single social platform. They actually spend up to two hours a day on social networks. And they're engaging with lots of interesting content. But the one that stuck out the most was was about uh, celebrity news and actually gossip, which kind of led to uh, the, really the theme of the overall campaign. 
So we leveraged that insight about their consumption of celebrity news against the product insight related to the food truck uh, sandwiches. So we often, as an innovator, try to look where our competitors don't. In this case, we looked at food trucks and food truck culture, and we uncovered this insight that you can have really awesome tasting food in an unexpected place out of a roach coach, essentially. Um, and so why not have something that is really great tasting food out of a place like a drive through And that's what led to the insight behind the product. So we merged those two together in this campaign and used this uh, sort of insight about the product that it can be unexpected to pit Jack and Martha Stewart against each other. And Jack started the celebrity feud where he was bound and determined to get someone with the culinary palate of Martha to try fast food. And it's funny because that's what happened in Twitter um, in the campaign, but it's also what happened in real life. Because Martha lives in New York and we're not in New York, and so when we called her about this campaign, she was like, fast food, I don't know. <laughs> and two hours into the shoot, she could not stop eating the chicken. So <laughs> it worked. Um, but we started the campaign through this social first initiative and we launched with a teaser video that was seeded through Twitter primarily prior to the Super Bowl to tell people that this celebrity feud was brewing. And as I mentioned before, while this is a Super Bowl campaign, it had to stretch two months of the lifespan uh, of the actual product. So we did this through a really like five-prong approach to seed the actual feud, to let people know it was coming, get buzz out early to PR outlets about the campaign. Uh, then we actually launched it during the Super Bowl and the day after. The feud ran for two weeks um, through a variety of activations on social media, and then we had sustaining creative that actually made it last through the entire pro our product life cycle. So this is how we kicked it off. Sir, what are you doing? Uh -oh. Don't move! <gasps> okay! I know who you are! No, you know. And then on Super Bowl Sunday, we rolled into the all-out feud. Well, the campaign did include a 60-second commercial in the Super Bowl. We went big this year. If we're going to invest that much in the content and in the celebrity, you might as well invest that much in the media so everybody sees it. Um, but like I said, it was really about the feud that ignited on social. So I'll show you the 60 and then a couple follow-up uh, videos that were posted in social. And there you have it, a beautiful banh mi-inspired fried chicken sandwich. You'd never find this at a fast food restaurant. It's a good thing. <laughs> oh, is that right, Martha? Sir? I don't think so. Hey, Martha, my new food truck series has an Asian fried chicken sandwich made with crispy fried chicken strips, crunchy Asian slaw, and a gochujang mayo, all on a toasted baguette. And I'll put it up against yours any day. Security, get him! What, are you afraid somebody in the fast food world's gonna show you up? Whatever she's paying, I'll pay you double. Wait, wait. You want to go to war with me, Jack? What are you going to do? Tuck me into bed and read me a cookbook? <laughs> oh! Oh my gosh! What? I can't smell! I can't smell! My nose! What the f***? Here, let me, let me fix it. Let me fix it. Oh, that's better. So, are you going to try the sandwich, Martha? Get him out of here! Okay, it's on, Martha! I'm going online! I'm starting a hashtag! Get ready for a Twitter war! Bye, Jack! So that was really the call to action to lead to the online engagement. And then eventually, Martha tried the sandwich. It's time to sell the meat. Or should I say the fried chicken? Martha Stewart, once and for all. Look, Martha, I'm sorry. You don't have to try that. <gasps> That's my Asian fried chicken sandwich. Why do you Why don't you go? Why is that? Huh? Yeah, she's good. 
so in between those videos, we had about 15 additional pieces of content, uh, videos, GIFs, just posts, uh, copy that helped to tell the story of the tit for tat and the back and forth. Um, and our fans really engaged with it, and Jordan will talk about that a little bit in a moment. But in addition to the humor, at the end of the day, we have to sell products. And there were three sandwiches in that line. So while she was focusing on the Asian fried chicken sandwich with gochujang mayo, which is a little bit difficult for a lot of our customers to say in the drive through the series included closer in sandwiches, like a Philly cheesesteak build that people were actually more likely to buy. You always highlight the uh, Halo product obviously, and then drive people in with something that's uh, closer in. And so we created content in various formats to continue to tell the story through the sustain launch that Jordan mentioned um, to help tell that the, the ingredient stories behind the other products. So this is one example. And then we touted the food and social as well. Yeah, I think we sold a few sandwiches to the front tables here. I got a, a good reaction out of the front. But uh, the, one of the things that we talked about was that this had to sustain the duration of the, of the product. And one of the things that came out of our research was actually the average length of a celebrity feud is only two days on social media. So ours stretched two weeks, but then we also had to fill the rest of the time. So, uh, leveraging that M1 tool that we talked about before, we were able to take those audiences and port them over to all the social channels because it's not just a planning tool, it's actually an activation tool as well. So we're making sure that we're reaching the same consumers that we hit with our hero uh, Martha Stewart messaging with actual product messaging across to every social platform that they can be at. Um, and we actually made this creative specifically for, creative, uh, for social. Um, so they're made for the platform. We saw incredible engagement rates with help with cost um, and really extend our message and really beat benchmarks across the table. And it wasn't just product focus. We did actually have a few other uh, moments throughout the window. You know, it started at Super Bowl, but right after that, you go into award season. We had the Olympics going on as well. Um, we worked with David and Goliath, the great creative agency that works with Jack in the Box to create this uh, social content. Uh, you know, as soon as The Shape of Water won uh, for Best Picture, we had this creative on the left. Uh, live, you know, best picture, bringing it back to the product itself of the sandwich, um, all in real time working with Jess and PK and the social team out there to put these uh, activations into market as soon as they happen. And the PR coverage was amazing. We definitely saw the spike happen across all of our measurement channels, starting with the teaser and obviously through Super Bowl weekend and particularly Sunday afternoon. Uh, we garnered a total of um, over 500 million impressions in media, as well as 276 publications, just in people sharing uh, the campaign idea. That's a big number for us because we're technically a regional brand. So when I say we ran a 60 in the Super Bowl, we bought that individually in 52 markets. Um, so for us, us to get included in Super Bowl roundups is very unlikely, particularly taking uh, a less traditional approach in this case with a Twitter campaign. So we definitely seeded it to the press differently and we're happy with the results that we got. One of the things of centering it around Twitter and social media was we were able to get a lot of great insights based off the conversations that were happening. The Super Bowl itself was the most active day in Jack in the Box's history on Twitter. Uh, more mentions, shares, likes, comments, retweets, whatever have you, name a metric, it beat it that day. And we were able to use uh, social listening throughout the duration of the campaign to measure sentiment. And overwhelmingly, the campaign had uh, positive sentiment from our brand advocates, strangers, publications, um, everybody. And that extended into the other properties the brand has invested in. So this example from IGN where we had a back and forth with them in Twitter in the middle of the Super Bowl is a great example of how you want a campaign to reach across the aisle and kind of bring all the partners together totally organic in the moment. And lastly is results. You know, as I mentioned, you know, we aren't just after likes, comments, and retweets. Um, although those are great and vanity metrics, we are you know, at our root. iProspect is a performance marketing agency and we're looking to drive brand results. Um, so while engagement rate's fantastic and we saw great numbers, what that does is the social platforms actually reward that content through the auction and we actually kept our costs incredibly low, which helps us extend our reach, um, get more bang for our buck, which allowed for uh, you know, a 12 point lift in ad recall. And even if we're running a Super Bowl ad, we still saw that consumers that saw it on social media were actually 
uh, more likely to remember our advertising, even with all the other media activity that we had going on, and a four-point lift in purchase intent. Um, and you can see the campaign really did span every social platform through the entire duration of the campaign, and we were able to actually map uh, sales results to that activity to show the positive correlation that this social first campaign had in our you know, overall bottom line. Ta-da. <laughs> Thank you.